Good morning, traders. This is Bruce at Velox Pro. If you can hear me and see my screen, just type yes into questions, and we'll get started. All right. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. All right. So, uh, let's see, uh, quite a few people in here this morning. So, uh, just uh, want to know, get get a feel for uh, anyone new, uh, new new traders out there uh, in the room here. Uh, let me know. Okay. Yeah. See already a few of you guys. Okay, good. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, we're going to go through uh, the basics in Bookmap, and we're going to go through the um, live order flow, uh, and uh, and show you uh, what Bookmap is showing you, and then how to uh, start to uh, understand it and uh, integrate it into your trading. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's start off with the risk disclaimer here. Uh, trading futures uh, and equities involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, bookmap.com, let me show you. Uh, you. This is where you can find Bookmap for more information, and you can become a member here in the members portal. Uh, and when you become a member, you'll have access to free resources. So let's click on Explore and uh, come down into book map and then click on pricing here. Uh, and this is where you can find book map. Okay. So uh, I'll let you guys read the basics, but you can see uh, two different versions of book map. Uh, now these two versions over here, they just include the DX feed. It's the uh, access for us equities. Uh, we're not a data provider, but we have a partnership deal uh, with DX feed to provide you NASDAQ total view. Uh, and you can see the price differences there. Now, the uh, nice thing for uh, for you new guys, uh, you get a 14-day trial period here with Bookmap. Okay, it's free. Uh, give it a shot. Uh, attend these webinars. Ask questions. Uh, access a lot of the educational resources, and uh, you should be up and running uh, pretty quickly in Bookmap. Okay, let me just show you quickly the uh, the user portal here. Okay, uh, there's uh, under features. There's videos uh, for getting started. Uh, or understanding book map. There's educational videos here. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, uh, and then you can also uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And let me just show you the playlist here. So go to our YouTube channel and go to playlists. Okay. All the recorded webinars are here. Now, unfortunately, last Friday's uh, recording did not work. So I uh, apologize for that. Uh, we don't have a recording from Fridays. Okay. Then uh, here uh, is the new educational course from Bookmap. There's parts one through four. Uh, they're about an hour each. Uh, if you want to understand some of the uh, uh, phenomena in Bookmap and uh, uh, how to put this together into a, uh, uh, a, a trading plan. Uh, so uh, that is, there's that. Uh, and understanding those markets, uh, features and components here for the new guys. Uh, I would uh, recommend watching uh, some of these and understand what, what it is you're looking at in Bookmap. Uh, and then uh, uh, the order flow uh, video snippets. Uh, these are very concise, uh, usually about uh, three minutes long uh, each that go over a lot of the uh, phenomena that we see in Bookmap. So these can be very helpful. Uh, they're very quick. Uh, we go over them in detail here during the webinars. All right, well, let's just jump right in and look at Bookmap. Okay, and uh, let's see, I'm going to go over what it is you're actually looking at here in Bookmap. Okay, we're going to start with this candlestick chart. It is a five minute candlestick chart. Or, yeah, that's correct. Um, and uh, so most of us understand a, a candlestick chart. We're very familiar. Uh, so uh, you, you can see that, uh, you know, open, high, low, close, and you see the wicks, you see the body that is the, uh, the, the um, open and the close, and the wicks are the extent that uh, price went to. So you can start to gauge some of the pressure and order flow. Uh, however, uh, there's a problem here. There's so much data that you're just not viewing uh, in a candlestick chart. Okay? Uh, number one is is uh, volume. Okay? So uh, we do have a volume subchart here in Bookmap. So you can see the, and, and most people do. Uh, so uh, you, you can see uh, the volume on some of these candles uh, where they occurred. 
uh, we're already gaining a lot more insight just with a subchart here uh, due to the volume. However, we have uh, no idea, uh, big, big problems here with the subchart. Uh, we have no idea what type of volume it is. Uh, was it aggressor buy or aggressor sell? Uh, we also don't know where this took place uh, within this five minute period. And uh, we don't know uh, how much. Uh, I mean, you have uh, how much here in the total of the five minute period, but you don't know exactly where and how much. Okay. So uh, some of the details in the volume, which are just critical, uh, are not within the candlestick chart. Okay. Uh, so let's just start to add layers of information here to the chart. Okay. And I'm going to first just uh, input the best bid and offer. Okay. So now all I've added here uh, to this candlestick chart is the historical best bid and offer. Okay. So, um, uh, the uh, the green line is the historical best bid, and the red line is the historical best offer. Uh, you can see the current uh, market right here, the, the dashed uh, green and red. Uh, green is the best bid, and red is the uh, best offer. Last traded volume is this little number right here, okay, that takes place on the, on the bid or the offer. Okay, so that's all I've added into this candlestick chart, but just this alone is already helpful. All right. I mean, we can see the speed uh, at which some of this uh, uh, price action is moving. Uh, we can start to understand uh, uh, where the volume might have occurred uh, within some of these candlesticks. But um, uh, that that alone is uh, already starting to break open that that time frame and, and helpful. But let's add on the volume dots. OK. OK. Now we're getting a lot more information. Uh, we're really starting to understand the order flow. All right, and let me zoom into this little area right here because it's kind of a swing low, uh, and we'll zoom in, and let me show you what you're looking at, okay? So within this five-minute period here, uh, you can see how Bookmap solves that issue uh, with the volume. Uh, you can see exactly where it traded, okay? We have so much more information here. Uh, the candlestick uh, is uh, we had a, a, a low test here many times, and then that broke uh, by a tick uh, and uh, and went down lower, okay? Uh, and then uh, that failed and we went right back up, okay? That retest here, uh, you would not see uh, in the, uh, I mean, you would see price dip on that candle, but then that, that information is lost, okay? This is captured now here in Bookmap, okay? And uh, any of you out, out there that are trading um, uh, footprint charts, uh, you want to uh, just uh, let me let me know uh, because uh, uh, you're going to see all of this volume data here uh, in a footprint chart. However, the details are going to be lost, okay? Because a lot of most of the footprint charts are either time based or some candlestick rotation base, uh, so they aggregate the data. Okay, uh, that's a problem with the uh, those those charts. Uh, that data aggregation uh, it loses the detail. So here uh, you can see that that problem is solved okay? because, for example, uh, this little swing low, and then you can see we are we are exhausting out here. Uh, you probably even lose that data. Well, you wouldn't in the footprint chart at this point here. Uh, you would not see the exhaustion, uh, and um, but then that would be gone, and you wouldn't see it here, right? Because this data can't comes in and aggregates and fills in. Uh, the uh, the information here, okay. But you would see, of course, the swing low and the uh, the uh, exhaustion. Now it's not complete exhaustion, but look at the selling down here, very little, okay. Ah, so I better explain the dots uh, and what we're showing in Bookmap. So let me quickly do that uh, with a very simple example. Uh, you can see the historical best bid is the green line, and the best offer is the red. Now a red dot. Uh, that is painted here uh, in book map when uh, an aggressor uh, hits the market sell button. So that's the type of volume we're displaying is the aggressor classification. They are market sells and market buys okay? because they wanted to pay up. They were aggressive. They, they paid for the spread and, and crossed it, and they took liquidity off of the best, best bid. Okay, green, line, uh, green dot is a, uh, a market buy. Okay, same same story, All right? So now we've captured this data here, and you can see the dots. 
Uh, but uh, if I hover over this, click on the hand tool and hover over this area, uh, and I zoom in, okay? And we're gonna pull apart every single transaction that took place there, okay? So Bookmap is capturing every single market event that unfolded here, okay? If you look down here at the timeline, uh, you can see that we're down at microsecond level, okay? Now, this is excellent for those of you who are um, uh, trading algorithmically and you want to understand some of this behavior and how your algorithm is performing within this environment, okay? Because it's going to, you can record your trades here in Bookmap uh, and you're going to see everything, all right? Now that's actually originally why Bookmap was developed by us. Uh, to test algos, and we thought that this was a good idea for a um, uh, product, okay? So now, uh, let's take a look at this. You, you can clearly see, look at how mechanical this selling was here. Okay, look at the time and the spacing, right? This is clearly algorithmic activity, right? So we can identify, and we can start to, now, no one trades off of, uh, you know, human a human does not trade off of microsecond uh, levels. So if we start to zoom out though, notice how the volume dot is still giving you, is giving you all that granularity and detail of what occurred in this area here, but it's also showing you uh, the aggregation of it just graphically or visually. And uh, we can also understand each, let me zoom back in and, and do this again uh, because uh, what I want to show you is the, the rollover tool. So graphically, we're displaying all this information, but you can see exactly with using the uh, data tip tool here, uh, we get the date, the time, what was on the bid at this price level, and the volume at that very specific microsecond time. Okay, that's uh, on the second line there, the time. Okay, so this was for a volume of one. So now you can understand, you can see how this market unfolded here with the algorithmic activity. They hit the bid pretty hard here at that very moment, but with small size, okay? But that this all adds up and it's all captured here in Bookmap, okay? Um, and um, now as I zoom out though, let, let me show you this, okay? So this dot is, is graphically aggregating that information. And if I hover over this dot now, it tells me exactly what that volume was. Okay, it's not one, it was 101, right? So instead of, uh, you know, you would have seen a flurry of activity go through your time and sales of like one and two lots. Uh, instead, we're graphically uh, showing you the, 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 uh, the granularity and the detail, but you're also seeing the, um, uh, the overall picture now here too, uh, graphically. Okay. Now, so many trades occur so quickly uh, that uh, we don't have enough space uh, within a, a, a specific um, uh, zoom to show you all that the, all that buying and selling. So what we do is we will uh, give you the overall in the pie-shaped dot uh, here. And so you can see many of these pie-shaped pie um, uh, dots and uh, uh, they have both buying and selling in it, but you get the overall understanding of that behavior uh, by the uh, uh, just the the graphics here, uh, looking at the uh, pie. So you know that more than three quarters of this information here uh, was aggressive buying. All right. So now you can also see the granularity, uh, how these markets actually unfolded, and uh, you're not going to see that. Uh, within traditional uh, footprint uh, charts, okay? Okay. All right, uh, sound check, is, can everyone hear me? You can just uh, type a yes. No. Yes, some can, some can't. Okay. Okay, no, it's, it's working. Oh, okay, all right. No, everything's good. All right, so, uh, uh, all right, so uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Digby, uh, you should uh, log out and, and log back in. So anyway, that's the uh, the details here and the volume, and now you have much more transparency into what's going on and where transactions actually occurred in Bookmap. Uh, now, 
uh, and that's good. Uh, there's a whole other side to the market though that we want to cover, uh, and that is the uh, the auction part. Okay, the bidding and the offering, and that occurs outside of this chart. The, none of none of the, none of the uh, information here yet uh, in this chart is displaying that information, and that information is traditionally shown in a dome. Okay, so the book map columns over here. This is the dome, uh, and um, the COB column, it stands for current order book. Uh, and we can see uh, exactly what um, uh, is on the uh, uh, best bidder offer. Let's go back to the current market. Okay. So these numbers change all day long, as we know. Uh, you know, more bidders or uh, sellers, uh, they come into the market. And, and these price levels here are where they're willing to deal. Uh, and we can see the liquidity uh, at these price levels. Okay, and, the, and between these two white lines, that is the current book. Okay, so here's your best bid and offer, and here's your depth on the bid, here's your depth on the offer. Okay, now we know that these numbers change all day long, and it's kind of difficult to read these. Uh, and um, uh, But we're looking for areas of high liquidity, okay, and we can see the highest in the book is down here. Uh, and uh, we have a column uh, to the right of it that's uh, the same COB column, but uh, if you right click in this column and format it, uh, you can choose uh, bars, bars and numbers, or numbers only. Okay, so I'm displaying this one as bars only and this one as numbers only. So I also know immediately by the bars the graphical representation of this uh, liquidity at this uh, 63 level. All right, so. A dome is where we get our information on the um, uh, auction process, uh, typically. Okay, uh, for most of us out there, that's been the, the method was to be able to read the dome. Now, reading the dome, uh, it can be very tedious, uh, especially understanding levels of liquidity, how they behave, uh, how they um, uh, others uh, start to join in or pull. Uh, what about the areas around it? And then what about the other side on the offer and how might they be behaving uh, at the same moment? That's a lot of information to uh, to understand, okay? The problem with the dome is you don't, I mean, you get that for a moment and you'd, that, you'd have to record mentally all of that information. And maybe you'll remember, uh, you know, maybe they were bidding here at 64. Uh, maybe you'll remember some minutes ago but what about an hour ago? Are you going to remember that? That this the problem here with this dome is all of that is fleeting. Uh, it's it's it, it's only showing here for the moment. It is the current book, okay? And that's the problem here. All right. So now let me turn that on in book map. And uh, here we now we can see uh, that behavior. Uh, and let's just start with this window here. Okay, uh, this is a graph. This is the current market window uh, to the right of this uh, vertical white line, and we can see the liquidity here. Okay, it's a, it's represented uh, as a heat map of the uh, numeric values here. Okay, so in fact, uh, let me adjust it uh, a bit more. Okay, so we can see very quickly areas of high liquidity. They're very bright. Okay. Uh, in fact, there's a cutoff here that we can adjust uh, because that, that 27 is a lot, 2,700. So if we adjust that white um, uh, cutoff, you can see now we have a better uh, representation of it. Okay. All right. Okay. And um, so that's the current market window. And you'll see the uh, heat map will change to reflect the changes within the numeric values. Okay. Now, that problem of trying to remember that current market state uh, is solved here in Bookmap because we transpose all of that history onto the chart. Okay. So now uh, you can see where they were bidding, or where they were offering previously, or if we start to zoom out, uh, we can see uh, every single uh, 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 auction uh, and the history of it, uh, where they were interested previously, how many, uh, how much liquidity, uh, where was it, what about ticks or you know above it or below it, uh, did they pull? All of these questions can now be answered here emphatically uh, using Bookmap. 
Okay, so let's zoom into this little area here because uh, uh, we see some transactions that occurred and some pretty high liquidity here at 64. Okay, and that was just uh, some minutes ago. Okay, as I start to zoom in, okay, and let me adjust the heat map again. All right. Okay, so now we're starting to see the full picture. Okay, at this granular level again. Okay. Uh, we have high liquidity here, okay? but look how they're pulling the last minute. Okay, so in this auction, and think of it like an auction, uh, we're starting to understand uh, this dome information exactly what's occurring. Okay, how they behaved at this price level now historically as well, and you can see that they weren't very interested. We see them hit the bid here pretty hard with aggressive volume. Uh, but uh, they were um, uh, the liquidity here was uh, that high liquidity with these 1,650 contracts previously uh, is turned into 1,500, and then they pulled it, and now we're down to 800, and then the selling occurred. Okay, so pulling that liquidity, uh, and uh, uh, then there's uh, something interesting here. Okay? High liquidity, very aggressive, 1,700 contracts on the offer. Very aggressive because it's just one tick away. Okay, and uh, and this is more like a spoof. It's behaving like a spoof because they're pulling high liquidity here, they're hitting the bid here, and then they come in with uh, a high liquidity here uh, to skew that auction. Okay, showing massive supply very quickly on the offer. Okay and trying to drive price probably down into that 63 level here with those 2,700 contracts, okay? That, that was not successful, right? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it looks like uh, they got their, they got them selling here, uh, but uh, they weren't able to get a, a, any lower than here and then maybe gave up here and started to uh, aggressively just lift the offer, right? Okay, or maybe they're gonna come back and work this area again. Okay. Now we know how that behaved there previously, though, and this is allowing you a lot more transparency into this market. All right. Okay. So that's uh, that's bookmap, uh, and uh, now let's start to uh, to read this, and and we've already started reading it, uh, and let's put this into some more context. Okay. We've already started doing that process too. Okay. So uh, we can see uh, that. Um, uh, we're still kind of around this area here, uh, and um, uh, we, we're starting to understand this auction. Okay, they're uh, not so interested at 64, uh, but they are—they are down here still. Okay, and now look at the behavior one tick ahead of it. Okay, we're starting to understand this area a little bit better now. Okay, so uh, you can see that they're adding liquidity here. Note the striations uh, in the heat map is showing it's getting brighter. So that's showing more interest uh, at this area, one tick above that high liquidity. So that's potential front running of this high liquidity. Okay. Now, if they're really interested in buying, uh, the behavior we're going to see, now look at how they're layering in here with high liquidity. Okay. Okay. Larger players layering in their limit orders. All right. Uh, so where can the market trade here? Okay, a question to you. Uh, where, where, uh, well, what does the market need to trade? Anyone on that? Yeah, that's that's right. Liquidity. Yep. So, so uh, you know, I'm I'm expecting or anticipating. Uh, this liquidity to get tested, okay? And here we're coming down to it now, right? And uh, they're layering in with liquidity, and how are they behaving around these areas? Start to answer these questions, uh, because uh, now we're putting the, all of these pieces together, and we're starting to uh, uh, anticipate the market trading down into some of this high liquidity. Okay, because if it wants to trade, this is where it needs to go, right? And we can see where the transaction is taking place, 
and what type of transactions are they? Okay, we can start to see this is a lot of selling. Okay, so we have more selling at the lows here. Okay, here come some buyers now. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, okay, so quite a bit of buying just came in. Uh, let's uh, now I, I it, may, it it starts to uh, uh, make me uh, ask a question here about what's occurring at this area. Okay. So we see the transactions. So maybe these guys are getting their fill and maybe they're getting impatient uh, in their layering, the larger players here. Okay. So uh, maybe they're going to start aggressively buying instead. Okay. And they're going to give up on uh, waiting for this to occur. Or maybe we'll see a little bit of both. Uh, some aggressive buying, some spoofing, pushing into some of these areas here. Uh, or uh, or here, maybe, maybe we're gonna, they're starting to bid it up a little bit. Okay, become a little more aggressive. Okay, and then aggressive buying here. Uh, we'll, we'll watch. We'll we'll wait and see how this unfolds here. Uh, but um, uh, the question that uh, it makes me ask is: Are there iceberg orders in this area? Are they still getting filled uh, the way that they want before getting into this area? Okay, so we have an add-on indicator for that. Okay, and let's switch on the indicators. Okay. And uh, no, not really. I see only four uh, here. Okay. Okay. So this number here, uh, this 302, is showing the uh, icebergs, uh, the hidden orders that occurred at this area. Uh, and a hidden order, does anyone have any questions on that? Uh, what an iceberg is or hidden order? Okay. Uh, because um, the uh, uh, well, let me let me let me describe it. So, what this number represents is contracts that actually traded. They actually transacted, but there were these 302 contracts more than what was on the offer at that moment traded. So that's an impossible situation. You can't trade more than what is offered. Uh, and, uh, uh, but you can if they're hidden, okay? So uh, uh, our algorithm can identify that and then and display it as a number, okay? So uh, there are um, larger players usually use the iceberg order because they do not want that uh, liquidity that they show in the book to scare the market, to skew the auction, okay? That spoofing uh, type of activity that we witnessed earlier uh, it was back. Uh, oh God, where was it? Um, let me take the candlesticks off here now. So back in this area here. Uh, anyway, what we were witnessing earlier. Oh no, it was here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, well, we see 190 here, okay, 216 here, okay, but then 1,200 here. Okay, wow. All right, so uh, really I think we're, they're still trying to push down, down to the downside on the overall here. All right. Uh, anyway, um, the uh, uh, hidden, hidden order, uh, that'll capture that, that, that difference. All right. And, um, uh, now, uh, we're putting, you know, all, all these pieces together and starting to understand what book map, uh, which is just the market. I mean, what the, what the volume, the traded volume, how it's behaving, uh, where it's taking place, the type of aggressor, uh, and, uh, all of that within the auction process. Uh, within the historical limit order book. We see the current limit order book here, okay? But that problem is solved with the heat map by uh, historically um, uh, charting it uh, and recording it uh, and understanding these areas a lot better, okay? Any questions on that? All right, there's a lot of traders in here today, so uh, welcome. Uh, but uh, I just want to uh, uh, 
uh, go through for the new traders, go through some of the basics. Uh, and then uh, now we can start to get into much more advanced about uh, uh, the order flow and what's going on here. Okay. So now I'm seeing a, a, a kind of a flip in this uh, order flow here uh, where we're seeing, you know, more volume starting to trade up in the higher areas. Okay. So uh, this, this maybe, maybe this is starting to signal kind of a, uh, certainly a slowing down uh, and we can see it's already slowed down here just by uh, the way that, uh, you know, the market's kind of sideways, but a slant to the downside. Okay. But uh, this is a distinction here. Okay. We see exhaustion in some of these like little lower highs here. Okay. Points of exhaustion, right? Not a lot of volume. There's, there's some that volume have traded here, but in general, look at this area here. There's, there's really no or lack of buying interest up in these areas. And all of the interest has been on the lower lows and more selling. Okay. All right, so usually, uh, and that's very indicative of a trending environment. Okay. And I'll just uh, want to, uh, you can draw on the book map chart here using the drawing tools. Uh, and I just want to outline uh, a few um, a few different areas here. So you can see the channel here, okay? And you can see it coming into the higher liquidity area, okay? Uh, but we did, I was looking for that flush. I was, I was looking for that flush to the downside through or into some of that high liquidity uh, and then for those guys to, uh, uh, they'd have their fill uh, and then uh, uh, look for them to uh, lift the offer pretty aggressively uh, after that. Uh, anyway, uh, that is, that scenario uh, didn't, didn't really uh, unfold uh, at all. I mean, we see just a, a, a tick or two below 64 here uh, and, and very little selling. Okay, now it's, we're seeing this uh, kind of structure broken. We're starting to see more volume trade at a higher area. Okay, so uh, we need to keep an eye on it. Uh, let's look, zoom in a little bit more and get a feel for what's the book telling us. Okay, they're uh, starting to bid up uh, a bit, as you can see uh, in some of these areas, but then they pull. Okay, so, you know, it's not uh, a little aggressive here, maybe back at 64, but they were here earlier. Right. If they're really interested in buying, though, they're going to start to show liquidity at these higher areas here. Okay. All right. So let's see. We have FOMC on Wednesday. Last couple of weeks, we haven't had a lot of data. Uh, this week is uh, well. That's the big big event. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, usually you see kind of. Uh, you know, some sideways action uh, before uh, bigger, bigger news events and uh, kind of quiet before the storm. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you don't, sometimes you'll see them uh, anticipate uh, already that activity. Uh, and uh, uh, then basically after the event, you'll see a sell off if it's good news, but all right. Uh, just, uh, yeah, trying to hear that. So what, what, what are we seeing at the moment? Uh, okay. I mean, we have our structure broken here. Okay. We have volume trading above it and it's, it's now becoming significant. Right. Uh, so, you know, but I, I, I see nothing else right now. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the, if the, um, the aggressive buyers, if they want to want to lift the offer, they can here uh, very easily. Uh, and uh, all of these sellers down here who are who are um, uh, buying the uh, the breakdown, uh, they're going to be trapped and they're going to be covering and probably you know look for uh, maybe around this uh, 67 area or above 67 and a half uh, to um, uh, start to get filled. Now one of the things that you can use Bookmap for uh, to help with that is starting to look where uh, some of the larger traders are also starting to target. Uh, they'll put their targets in uh, beforehand because they will ha have their place in line. So they'll hold it. Oh boy, Having some issues with uh, my data here. Okay, so um, hmm. all right. Well, let me um, 
I'll just uh, end on this uh, note. We've already gone for about uh, 35 minutes uh, and uh, uh, starting to cover uh, uh, using book map within the heat map for your trade management. Okay, because we have all the data here, right? So look for uh, large liquidity to start to uh, uh, on the offer here, uh, in, and see if uh, uh, maybe they'll be targeting some of these areas up here. Okay, and you'll see if if it comes into the book, right? Uh, and then uh, if we see that, then uh, look for maybe some of this kind of uh, aggressive uh, uh, orders on the bid side, uh, maybe some aggressive. Um, uh, buys at the same moment and will charge right up into those areas. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, now there, now there's different ways to, um, uh, start to understand, uh, the, the liquidity, uh, within the book, uh, and the historical liquidity as well. All right. Any questions? Uh, anything in, in any details? We covered uh, quite a bit. I mean, there's it's pretty lackluster uh, uh, data here today, or uh, you know, market action here. I mean, you know, we've only gone like you know for the day. Like, I think we're you know somewhere between between four and five points. So not not a lot of activity here, um, and uh, uh, it's going to be slow. I think in uh, it's summer as well, but uh, uh, waiting for that FOMC. Okay, or geopolitical events. Right? Uh, market will be certainly watching those. Okay. Uh, w one more thing here. Uh, end on uh, some of the columns here. Uh, a lot of traders like to trade from the dome, so uh, we have our volume columns, and um, uh, you can see there's SVP, which is the session range volume uh, profile, CVP. Is a, a chart range volume profile, and I have it split out here. Okay, you can either have it as a profile, as you can see here, or you can split that data out. So just right click, and then you choose format. Okay, where you can see here, this one we have volume chosen here. This is your data type. Okay, there are many different data types to look at here in Bookmap, and you can open up many columns by inserting a new column, or you can uh, retract those columns by hiding it. Okay. Uh, once you uh, select your, your data type for volume here, I have some other options. I can use uh, chart range or session range, okay? And then uh, I can format that column too. So let's choose format. And uh, you can see I have it as bars and numbers, okay? And I split the data out here, okay? You can have it as a profile if you don't want it split, or you can split it out because we have the aggressor classification. Okay. So uh, a lot of traders like this view. They want to see the book versus how much volume is trading. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, so now you have it. Okay. In fact, we can reset that. There's a reset option here. Uh, and we can configure it. You can reset now. You can have it reset on a double click. Okay. So let me show you what that looks like. There you go. Uh, and then let's bring that back now to a... Uh, all our data, okay, or uh, you can schedule resets as well, okay. You can have one uh, every certain amount of uh, hours, minutes, or seconds, or a specific time of day, so like 9.30 Eastern time, cash open, okay. And there's a conditional reset here. This is a new feature in, in 6.0 uh, that uh, if you're very closely watching, uh, you know, every single tick and uh, a price moves out of an area, uh, and then moves back in, well, you don't want it to reset uh, because it just was outside of that area for a quick test and this right back in. The, the conditional reset, if it stays outside of that area for a specific amount of time on milliseconds, uh, you know, you could be, it could be uh, uh, one second, two and a half seconds, or five seconds, uh, and uh, it stays outside of there, then it will reset, right? Else, uh, if it goes back in, uh, it will not reset your data. Okay, so you still retain it. All right, guys. Uh, if there's any questions, let me know. And uh, actually, one more thing I want to cover here. Uh, and uh, that is, since we have some new traders in here, uh, you know, we, we are, our initial offer here, uh, you know, with uh, DX feed, 
uh, through uh, you know our partnership. Uh, we want to know about other uh, equity traders here uh, and which broker you'd like to use. Okay, so uh, I'm going to launch this poll. Okay. Can you guys uh, see that? And if you can. Uh, let us know what uh, what broker you're you're using here or prefer, okay? Out of uh, TradeStation, Thinkorswim, or Interactive Brokers. Okay, this will really help us out, and it'll help you out. I mean, uh, it's up to you. Uh, we need to uh, uh, connect to more data providers for equities. So, um, yeah, help us out here. Oh, yeah, this was our original kind of spoofing activity, I think, here. Okay. Okay, just get a few more of you guys, if you could. Cast your vote there. For either TradeStation, Thinkorswim, or Interactive Brokers. All right, I mean, it's been a big battle between these three here. So uh, let us know. All right. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Let's call it a day, uh, and we'll continue tomorrow. And. Um, uh, hopefully uh, have a little more activity to, to take a look at here uh, and cover some more uh, phenomena here in bookmap. All right. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and uh, we will catch up with you tomorrow. Have a good day.